Jared Poland Frono's photo dot com and sometimes you're in the right place at the right time with the right gear the right settings and you nail the shot and other times well you come back with something kind of like this the good news is today was not one of those sometimes days because i got this but what you don't know is i was a fraction of a second away from missing it all together but more on that after i explain how i found myself in the right place at the right time. This year, I'm lucky enough to have a photo pass that gets me into every single Major League Baseball stadium for every game. And the good news is the Phillies play only 14 minutes down I-95 at Citizens Bank Ballpark, which gives me a ton of games to shoot throughout the year. All right, let's talk about the gear that I broke out for this game. The Canon R3, 600 F4 RF, 402.8 RF, 14 to 35 F4, which I was doing a review on, the 28 to 70 F2, 85 1 2, and 70 to 200 2.8. Yes, that's a lot of gear. And the only lens that I ended up not using on this day was the 400 2.8. You know, the reason is you choose the lenses based on what type of image you're looking to capture. And in this case, the 400 wasn't actually needed. The location, they call this the inside third base spot. Two photographers can shoot from here at one time. The agencies and wires get priority in the early innings, but if it's empty, you can jump in. And by you, I, I really mean me because I've got a pass. Now, if you tried to do it, you'd get arrested. There's so many different images that you can capture from this one seat. When the Phillies are batting, you have a clear view to home plate, the pitcher's mound, and pretty much all the fielders. You can run through everything from the widest wides to the longest telephotos and everything in between. This also so happens to be where I captured the impossible shot. And when the visiting team is up, you can go super wide to grab shots of the on-deck batter which they also tend to get in the way of home plate from time to time but that's the nature of the beast now that that's out of the way let's get down to it harper stepped up to the plate just as blue hour was about to come to an end now i would have preferred this guy but you've got to hit the pitches that you're thrown i've got the 28 to 70 f2 on the r3 and for once i don't go fully wide open now, the reason being is I was having trouble telling on the back of the camera if the focus was nailing it at F2 in earlier photos that day, so I wanted to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. As I found out later in the computer, all the shots that I took at F2 were actually spot on, but that's okay because it's better to be safe than out of focus. Now my settings, 28 millimeters framed up with the Liberty Bell on the left-hand side and home plate on the right-hand side. The shutter, one two thousandth of a second, aperture f2.5, and ISO 1600. One two thousandth of a second is plenty fast enough to freeze the ball, f2.5 is still wide enough to give me some separation from the background, and 1600 ISO is simply the right settings in correspondence to my shutter and aperture. So that's how I got the shot, right? Well, not exactly, because there's still one crucial step and that's autofocus. And this is where I almost missed the shot. Let me show you how. You see the blue box? That means I'm in continuous autofocus and I'm having trouble getting it to lock on to Harper. This sometimes happens when you're shooting wider with distracting backgrounds and I'm not in the proper case. Now, for those who don't know, there's different cases you can choose on Canon cameras, like the R3, where one, you can focus on just the subject in the foreground and it won't be distracted by the background. That's probably the one that I should have had on, but I had it on the general catch all. Anyway, the AF is bouncing around the background or the catcher or the umpire, and I'm just not feeling confident at the very moment that it won't lock onto something in the background and allow me to miss the shot. So what I did was I quickly reached up with my thumb to a pre-programmed button that turns off servo and activates single focus, shown here with the green box. Just as I hit that button, the pitch is thrown, and I react. Did you see how fast all of that happened? Here it is again. Lock on was having trouble. Switched into single focus and bam, he hits a home run and I switched right back in to lock on tracking. 
35 shots in just over a second, and I got the shot I was looking for. Harper at the end of his swing, the ball sailing out to left field, the pitcher, the catcher, umpire, and the rest of the stadium all looking up, watching that baby sail. Could it be? Could it be? It is out of here! Sometimes you're in the right place at the right time with the right gear, the right settings, and well, a little bit of luck, and then you get the shot. Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com. See ya. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you Fro Pack 3 in action on this photo right here, starting with Prestige Worldwide. One click, beautiful. We've got November Rain, that looks cool, followed by Mentos, MDMA, which you may not use for sports, but you can see what it looks like. King Contrast looks great, followed by Eckert, gives it a little bit more of a muted pulled back look, and then we've got Fifth Element. But I wanna go up here to Fro Pack 1 to show you Skittles in action. One click, Skittles, and boom. That looks absolutely fantastic for sports, as well as landscapes, giving you a great starting point. So if you wanna give yourself a great starting point or speed up your raw workflow, we created 15 custom Lightroom presets you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you wanna save even more, and get Fro Pack 1, 2, and 3 with Fro Pack 1, including Skittles, you can pick them up right now at a steep discount. 